Hey guys, what's good? JB Illusion here. Um, bear with me, my voice is not, like, feeling super good. What well, wasn't that great this weekend. Anyhow, we're back with more about Gobbit. Let's do it. Miss Gobbit, how are you doing this evening? Gobbit glances up at the sound of your approach, a slight smile across her face. Hey, pal! Hey, pal! Oh, no, I can't do it. She puts her hands on her hips, sending madness scurrying. Are you ready for your next lesson? Absolutely, hit me with it. That wasn't a phone just now at all. Straight to business, she nods appreciatively. I like that, good. Fantastic. This one is about people like Auntie Chang and why we need them. There won't be a Q&A session after this story, but I want you to listen up. It's important. Alright, I'm all ears, let's go. Alright, so here's the upfront lesson. Fixers are important. You can't just go to a Johnson yourself and get a job. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't. It's a bad idea all around. Uh, okay, go on. Uh, the reason why it's bad, it's a bad idea to cut people like Auntie Chang out is because you need someone to vet your clients. It's important. It protects the whole team. That is true. Never make a deal with a dragon. She takes in a breath, lets it out slowly. You, uh, you remember the lesson from last time, the one about Sui and the shining object? Yeah. Well, after the run was over, we went back to the sinking ship for some R&R. &R. Okay, that makes sense. Sui had told us that the client would be sending a boat to collect the shining object in the morning. All that we had to do was keep the thing safe until the handoff. Makes sense? Alright. What, did like some eldritch creatures pop out? We were in a celebratory mood, we killed an evil wizard and stolen a priceless artifact, a good night's work by anyone's standards, true. Hanu and Egret got good and drunk in record time, Sui so went back to his cabin with a shiny object to, I don't know, stare at it a while or something? I retired to my cabin and crashed out. It had been a long night. Okay, that's, that's kind of weird. I remember waking up to sounds. Yelling, maybe? I was groggy, and they were far away. I couldn't quite make them out. The clock said 4.30 a.m. People, people were always partying on the raft, playing loud music, shooting off fireworks, that kind of thing. So loud noises early in the morning weren't unusual, but something felt off somehow. Okay, off how? It's hard to describe a queasy feeling in the pit of my stomach and an elevated heartbeat, rapid, shallow breaths. It was a lot like a panic attack, really. Not the kind of thing that you can sleep through. Oh no, I've, I, I can test this. So I got up to investigate. If something was wrong, I wanted to know. And if it wasn't, I figured that I might as well get, on, get in on the party. I stepped out into the hallway and my foot slipped. I came down hard, landed on my ass, and found myself sitting in a pool of blood. Dun dun dun! That's not good. She shakes her head, grimacing. No, no, it was pretty bad. Let me just ooh, move that just a little bit closer. So it's pretty obvious by this point that something had gone horribly wrong. My first thought was that the shiny object might have, I don't know, unleashed something? After what I saw it do in the warehouse, I, it would, I wouldn't have been surprised. I shook that off pretty quick, though. I knew what this was. Our client was playing us. He'd hired us to steal the thing. And rather than paying us for the job, he'd send another team to take it away. Ooh, that's... no, nah, that's not fun. So what'd you do? I got up and beelined for Malvina's cabin. She was the closest thing that the sinking ship had to a leader, and the strongest rat shaman on the raft. Why go to her? Why not head straight to Sui's cabin? That's a good question. Because I'm not an, idi an idiot, she stares at you blankly. Sorry, that wasn't aimed at you. But think about it for a second. If there was a retrieval team coming for the shiny object, and they were strong enough to handle Sui while he was holding it, what chance would I have of stopping them? I figured that it was time to bring out the big guns. Malvina was the one whom I could get them from. Okay. 
I uh, I passed some pretty bad stuff on the way down to Malvina's cabin. What do you mean by pretty bad stuff? Like dudes with like body parts just ripped off, arms, legs. Okay, it was old man Jayun's vault all over again. Okay. The torn up bodies, the blood streaked floors, I saw people who'd been cut apart with machetes. Scorch marks on the container walls, good lord. She bites her lip grimacing at the unpleasant memories stewing in her head. Deep down in the pit of my gut, I could feel the thumbing vibration of the shiny object. That heartbeat feeling that I had in the warehouse, it was back and stronger than ever. Whatever that rock was, it was awake. That'd be my cue to bail out. I, I wouldn't have wanted anything to do with that. I didn't either, believe me, but whatever was happening on board, it was killing people. And messily at that, I didn't want to risk getting cut down on my way to the life raft. Besides, Sui was my friend and the leader of my team. I thought that I had a chance to help him, so I took it. I sprinted down the last stretch of the corridor to Malvina's cabin. I can't tell you what a relief it was to put my shoulder into the door to feel it pop open and to go tumbling into that room and then somebody smashed a gun into my face it was Cadmus my friend he jammed the muzzle of his super warhawk into my cheek so hard it hurt then he grabbed me by the belt with his other hand I wasn't going anywhere just over his shoulder I saw Malvina she didn't look amused um, note to self, if he Heioi ever comes under attack, don't start knocking down my friend's doors. Yeah, that's a good idea. Wish, I, <laughs> wish I'd had you there at the time to keep me from doing it. She smiles weakly. Aww. Adren Adrenaline and abject terror can make a girl do some stupid things, I'll tell you what. I can believe that. Abject terror has made me do very dumb things. The smile on her face dies. She looks away. Anyway, it wasn't an attack. There were no hostile invaders on the sinking ship. And our client had nothing to do with what was going on. Turns out, there was no client. Sui had lied to us, to me, because he wanted the shiny object for himself. What he wanted to do was take the sinking ship away from Malvina. And so he used us to steal him something that could use that could use that he could use to foment a mutiny. Wow. She paused for a moment, gathers her rats in her hands and lifts them to her shoulders. They scurry over the leather of her coat and disappear into her hair. As it turns out, betrayal hurts, Seattle. Malvina felt it, and I felt it too. Sui had been a friend. I just risked my life to save his like four hours ago. And he tricked me into helping him do something unthinkable. I'd have killed him for that. Heck yeah. Yeah, well, we're getting to that. But I want, but I wanted to believe, but I wanted to believe me. Okay. As it was, I did just about the only thing that I could think of to extricate myself from the predicament. I fast-talked my way out of it. I opened up by doubling down on my loyalty to Malvina, Cadmus, and the status quo of the sinking ship, swearing my undying friendship. You know the drill. I did a good job of it, but they still looked a little iffy. Iffy with a warhawk is bad, so I volunteered to prove myself by stealing the shiny object back from Sui. Okay, that's probably a, not the best idea. I know, right? Not my style at all, but then I didn't really have a choice. I'd inadvertently helped to arm the bastard who was tearing our friends and neighbors apart. I don't think I could have cleared my name without taking his weapons away again. Taking his weapon away again. It was a hell of a night. I don't want to get into too many of the gory details. Friends died. Hell, friends killed each other. It was brother against brother, all that jazz, and Sui indiscriminate use and Sui's indiscriminate use of the shiny object let a lot of things into the world that shouldn't have been. Okay, like Wait, did Sui become a toxic shaman at this point? Um 
Did you get a good view of them this time? Yeah, I wish I hadn't, but I did. I don't really know how to describe the things. They were like animals, but wrong. Too many tails, bones, and in the wrong places, huge open sores, that kind of thing. So it is like a toxic shaman. They were spirits manifest in physical form, I think. Most of them took the form of rats, swarms of insects, rotting things, all of the old pestilence tropes. Sometimes there were colonies of things, all tangled together and moving as one. Not the sort of thing that I want to see again, ever. Wait, so is, was that a Rat King, technically? I'm assuming it was. So anyway, long story short, I got the shy object back from Sui. It wasn't easy, but I got it. And what happened? Don't leave a brother hanging. And I took it back to Malvina. She put the thing to better use than Sui ever did. She took to the thing like she'd grown up using it. We still lost dozens of people, but Suicide lost more. Cadmus was critically wounded, but he pulled through. After the skirmish, Malvina held an assembly. She told everybody that there would be new rules for life on the raft. Anyone who refused to follow them could leave. And if you broke them, you were done. The rules of the sea and all that. Oh! So if you broke uh, the rules of the sea, she'd like, I, I don't know, keelhaul you, throw you overboard, make you walk the plank? After the pronouncement, she turned on the surviving mutineers. Hanu was one of them. He'd been in on Sui's plan the whole time. She didn't kill him, but she did exile them from the sinking ship. And for people in our economic bracket, that was as good as a one-way trip to the walled city. I'd be willing to bet that they're all dead by now. Dang. In the wake of Malvina's ultimatum, Five survivors left the sinking ship. I was one of them. Why'd you leave? I had to go. We may have washed the blood off the decks, but the energy of the sinking ship had changed. It wasn't the carefree haven that I'd loved anymore. And as sensible as Melvina's rules were, I wasn't up to living under them. Understandable? We parted on good but sad terms. And as you'd expect, we drifted apart over the years. It's funny. I hadn't even thought of Malvino or the sinking ship in years, not until I decided to teach you your, pre your previous lesson, and it all came flooding back in. She pauses, turns to you. That's the story. It's finished. But I want to circle back on the lesson that I gave you up front, because it's important. We need Auntie Chang to bring us work. That's obvious. But we also need her to keep us honest, to be sure that we, on the team, are playing straight with one another. Auntie Chang's reputation rides on the legitimacy of the jobs that she brings us, and that, more than anything, is why we need her. If we didn't have Auntie Chang, or someone like her, we'd eventually tear ourselves apart. It happened on the sinking ship, it could happen again in Heioi. So anyway, that's the lesson. If you've got follow-up questions, go ahead and ask them. Thanks, Gabbit. We're good. Come back anytime. Interesting. I gotta ask him. I gotta ask. What happened with the shiny object? Well, first she used it to get rid of the things that Sui had let loose. Then she put it away for safekeeping. It's probably still there on the sinking ship. And <laughs> ensconced in some shrine or other, held under lock and key. She should have tossed the thing into the bay. Yeah, I agree. I didn't like it either. But then she, she'd already proven that she could handle the thing, and it didn't help her put down. And it did help her put down Sui's mutiny. Plus, she's a shaman. We deal with dangerous magic beyond mortal ken on a daily basis. It's not that weird for us. Eh, if you say so. Like I said, I'd have preferred it if she had ditched the thing, but in the end, it wasn't my choice to make. For what little I've heard, she's still in power over there, so I guess it's worked out okay. And Sui? That walking colostomy bag was already- good lord, dead. A walking colostomy bag, that's- that- ooh. 
eaten by his own monsters after I took the shiny object away. Turns out he wasn't much good at controlling them without it. Yikes. Her voice fills with grim satisfaction. He didn't even live long enough to watch his mutiny fail. Thanks, Gobbit. Sure, and Seattle, thanks for listening. These lessons are for your benefit, but I think that they help me too. And it's nice to be taken seriously every now and again. No problem, Gobbit. Look forward to the next one. Her face lights up. Yeah, me too. Now get a move on. I've got Gobbit things to do. Gobbit things to do? As you enter Gobbit's cabin, two things grab your attention. The first is Gobbit herself. She looks exhausted, bleary-eyed. The easy smile that you've come to associate with her is now is nowhere to be seen. The second is what she's doing. Gobbit appears to be in the middle of a valiant attempt to stuff a whole roasted duck into a saucepan half its size. The bird's rubbery neck flops from side to side with every heave of her shoulders. Okay, that was a little too descriptive. She looks up from the saucepan, blinking. A corner of her mouth twitches upward, but the half-smile fail falls away almost immediately. Oh, oh, hey, Seattle. Caught me at a bad time. It was just making dinner. Yeah, it looks that way. Wouldn't that work better if you cut it into small pieces first? Huh? She blinks down at the duck, and her mouth dips into a frown. Yeah, that'd probably be smarter, wouldn't it? I'm, uh, I'm not really thinking clearly today. Um, ready for my next lesson. No lessons today, Seattle. I'm not feeling up to it. What's wrong? You don't look very good. I, uh, she rubs the bridge of her nose with a pair of greasy fingers leaving smudges of duck fat behind. It's weird. Ever since our last session, I felt, I don't know, preoccupied with the sinking ship. Really? I wonder what her side quest is going to involve. I don't really do the whole haunted by the demons of my past thing. I mean, that's fine for some people, but I'm allergic to drama. Generally, when thoughts of the past get me down, I remind myself that it doesn't matter. Laugh it off and go have a snack. But this, I don't know. It's weird. Ever since our last lesson, I haven't been able to get the sinking ship out of my mind. She looks down at the pot full of mangled duck on the counter, closes her eyes. I guess I'm just worried about Cad and Mao. Which is weird, because why should I be? I mean, I haven't even spoken to them in years. Hell, if anything, they should be worried about me. I'm the one who gets shot at for a living. Maybe we should go check it out. Singing ship isn't that far, is it? No, no, I don't want to do that. At least not without a good reason. It'd be awkward. And I'm sure that it's nothing anyway. Actually, check that. I know what this is. It's my own personal version of the same thing that we're all feeling. The psychic sewage that's being dredged up in all of us by whatever's happening in the walled city. I'm sure that you've had some flashes of memory from the barons in your bad dreams, right? Images from the past come back to haunt you, but you weren't but you aren't gonna drop everything and go running back there because that would be dumb. So tell me, why should I? Because the simping the sinking ship is like fifteen minutes from here? It can hurt to check? Look. I don't want to go back there. If I don't have to, I'm thinking about the place. If thinking about the place is enough to mess with me like this, I don't want to know what being there will do. But I'll tell you what. I'll drop Malvina a line, just to check. Make sure that this is a me problem and not a them problem. And if this, if, if there is something going on, I promise you'll be the first to know. All right, Gobbit, if that's how you want to play it. It is. Now, uh, was there anything else that you wanted? No, nah, thanks, Gabbit. Yeah, sure, in Seattle. Everything will be fine, you'll see. If there is anything fishy happening on the sinking ship, you and Iz will be the first to know, promise. Okay. Hey, Seattle. I'm not really in the mood to hang out right now. Okay. That's all good. Now, I do believe... How this event gets triggered is all right let's just move past our brother for a second click check our new messages hmm huh. nothing darn let's go take a 
nice um, little walk and talk to his Isabel. Um, this is your personal machine. This is my personal machine. If you're looking for your mission computer, it's downstairs. She doesn't bother looking up. You can see that she's elbow deep in the guts of an obsolete cyberdeck. One of a half dozen that have been wired into her computer with, bra with braided cables. Uh, you got a second? There's a long pause, then she chirps out a response. We're talking now, aren't we? I guess, yeah. Um, got some questions. She leans in, scrutinizing the innards of the obsolete deck. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Any thoughts about the last run? What do you want me to say? We helped him kill his old unit. I know that was important to him, but as far as I'm concerned, I was only there for the drone. It's nice we could help him out, but I'm not a charity. I'm in for the money. I'm glad you convinced him not to turn a sheet into a ghoul. If he had done that, I don't know. I wouldn't have ever feel safe around him again, because that's the kind of thing you only do if you've lost all perspective. This was at least... He's still a little bit human inside. Anything else? Nope. I'm good, Isabel. Hmm. Kinda odd with Gobbit. Alright. Well, I think that's it for this episode of finding out more about Gobbit's past. Past. Very soon, I believe. We will find out what's going on, the sinking ship, and all the other fancy things. I'm JB Illusion. This is Shadowrun. Peace out. We'll be back.